It's going to be clear. Can we continue? These ten virgins, I call them the students of the college of the virgins. So we can say they were all in the same school. They all had the same vision. They all had lamps. They all sat by the door waiting for their bridegroom. Now how come after they had had all these common denominators, Jesus looks at them and categorizes them, calls one wise and call one group foolish. It was here I saw that we could all belong to the same church. Sit on the same pews. Sing the same songs. Hallelujah. Oh, Zana. Hallelujah. Oh, Zana. But everybody carries his own destiny. We could all come from the same womb. But because of the oil one carries above the other, one will have a mandate to succeed and to break through and the other will be struggling. Ladies and gentlemen, the extra oil the five wise virgins had placed them on a pedestal that was so high that the other virgins, although virgins, were classified as fools. It was in this story I saw that some virgins could be fools. So you could be in church, thank you. Praying in tongues. Part of us. But a fool. God have mercy. Lift your hand and say, I refuse to be a foolish virgin. I can hear you say it like a minute. Again for the last time. And Jesus said, one group is wise and another group is foolish. Now let's quickly look at three reasons why he called one group foolish. Then we'll come to those he called wise. Reason number one why he called this group foolish was that they didn't have extra oil. They didn't have extra oil. The oil you have on your head determines your speed and acceleration particularly in this our time that we are in where there are encumbrances and blockages and hindrances and barricades that have become obstacles hindering us from entering our destiny you need an anointing on your life that has the ability to catapult you out of obscurity into prominence and I came tonight to declare that if these virgins were lacking extra oil on their lives you will never lack the oil the Bible says in Ecclesiastes never let your head lack the oil I see an oil coming upon your life David said the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he restored my soul and said and said and said and he said he anointed my head with oil and because of that anointing my cup ran it over I see a running over blessing coming upon you a running over favor coming upon you because of the extra oil on your life if you believe it lift your leg and shout yes I said shout yes Rafa God is going to bless us because of the extra oil that is on this ministry my goodness men of God I see extra oil on your life married woman I see extra oil on your marriage I see extra oil on your children if you believe it shout hallelujah they were lacking extra oil number two they were short-sighted people short-sighted 
people. It's very, very, very dangerous to be short-sighted. They did not envisage that as we sit behind this door, just in case the, blood, the bridegroom delays, let us have some extra oil that can sustain us through the night. Never be a Christian who is short-sighted. Particularly after this revival. So many women are short-sighted. That is why when the man came and didn't have a car, because you wanted to marry a car, you did not accept his proposal. I love to marry. I love to encourage my church members to marry a Christian man who doesn't have a car but has an ambition and has the anointing on his life than to marry an unbeliever who has a car and is a foolish man. Let me tell you a story about two sisters in my church. This brother who happens to be my spiritual son traveled to the United States of America and went to do his medical course and uh, the guy succeeded. I mean, they gave him a very big house and he secured a very good job in a certain, one of the big hospitals and they told him it's good you marry with your position and the influence. So he came down and he said, Daddy, I want you to help me to get a woman who loves me for me. So the guy disguised himself and left all his cars and his everything in Accra and came to Takrade. And when he came, we introduced him as somebody who came from the U.S. Was wearing some t-shirt and some simple slippers and some jeans. And wore those clothes for, I think, about a week. Very relaxed. And he comes to church with a taxi. But the guy had broken through. Had money cars, but he just... So, he saw this usher in our church, Belinda. Very beautiful girl. And he came to me, Bishop, I want to marry this, your daughter. I said, well, go ahead. So, he brought... Belinda to me and they started the courtship thing and uh, I was monitoring them. I told my wife to supervise them for some time before we begin the counseling. And was hallelujah. Yes, there should be process. And the women, let me say this, the fact that the man told you I love you does not mean gather your, your bag and go and stay there. What nonsense. Let him pay your lobola so that he can respect you. Otherwise, one day he will tell you after all, are you not the one who carried your clothes and came here? If you want to go, go now. We want to give our women security. It's very important. Wave your hands at me here. Hallelujah. So, the man deliberately told the lady that I don't have money. I'm waiting for my goods to come. They will be coming at the harbor and I'll be going for them. You know, African women, because you come from America, she was expecting some America things. So two, three weeks, she stood in front of the man and said, which type of America did you go? <laughs> that it's only one clothes you are wearing every day. I can't see anything smelling America on you. She came to my office and said, Daddy, are you sure this man didn't go to hide in another country? And he has come lying that he went. I said, my daughter, follow your heart. Because I didn't want to, you know, when you are playing that your game, I don't want to be part of it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, come on, wave your hand at me. Amen. When Adam saw so Sister Eve walking and cut walking in the Garden of Eden. God didn't say anything. It was Adam who did the proposal. Adam said, Jesus Christ, hallelujah. A bone of my bone. <laughs> and after the proposal, God said, okay, if you have proposed, then for this purpose, a man will leave his house. Then God officiated. When there was a problem and God came into the garden, Adam said to God, the woman you gave to me. So as a pastor, I don't want my members to say the woman you gave to me. Even God, after that, they had some wisdom out of this and said in Proverbs, whoever finds a wife, go and find
Wave your hand. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I don't want to be part of that thing. And then one day the woman came to my office very furious. I don't love him. I, I'm ending it today. I said, Belinda, take your time. No, no, daddy. You don't know. You don't know. You're my spiritual father. Has it not been that? I would have spoken my peace of mind. I said, ah. The man came, the man loved the lady because she's very cute, very sweet. And as she was trying to talk to her, the lady banged the door of my office, brow, and walked out. Hey. The man tried through SMS, emails, went to her house, knocked it. the woman, didn't mind her, him, and so. Belinda's friend called Joyce. Everybody say Joyce. Who saw in this man what Belinda didn't see? After every service, Joyce would take the brother's bag and say, Brother Joe, I don't know, but can I please escort you? This is not a visa to be escorting people after church. Everybody say, yeah, yeah, boo. Can I continue? Yeah. Two, three months after, the brother came and said, Daddy, I think I found somebody who loves me for me. Courted with the lady for some time. Took the lady to the capital and showed the lady his house. In fact, his houses and his cars, about six beasts were parked in the garage. You know beasts? Huh? Serious cars. The Jaguars and the Lincolns and the Lexuses and the BMs. Say beasts. The lady was like, are you sure it's for you? She was shaking. I, I, I love you for you, not this cast. He said, no, no, no. I deliberately acted like this. It's mine. Uh, I'm a medical doctor. And uh, I'm going to the U.S. with you. We're going to marry and everything. They was like, hey. <laughs> Hallelujah. We brought them to church. And when I introduced them, I was in my office. You are in the anointing woman of God. When Belinda walked to my office, and said, Daddy, have you seen what my friend has done? She has taken my fiancée. I said, get out of my office, you witch. <laughs> Never be short-sighted as a child of God. See beyond today. Some of you want already made things. They didn't have foresight. They did not see beyond today. Some of you, you take your salary today. By two days, everything is squandered. Hey. We are in a world where you can't tell what is happening tomorrow. So get into some policies and make sure you put certain things. Listen, establish certain things just for tomorrow. That is why it's important to pay your tithes. Because when everything is shaking, that which cannot be shaken will remain. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. The third thing that made Jesus call this man foolish was that they procrastinated. When the bridegroom arrived and they discovered they didn't have extra oil, the Bible said when they went to their friend, their friend told them, Go to the city and buy for yourself oil because if we give you some of ours, we will not have enough to sustain us through the night. And the Bible said they went to the city to look for oil, which means that they knew where to buy the oil. But because of laziness, they sat there and delayed and talked and talked and talked and procrastinated. Church, what you refuse to deal with today, tomorrow will deal with you. 
the prodigal son should have stayed in the house of his father and submitted to parental authority and served as a son in the house because of bad life he took what belonged to him and left for a far country when he went there what he was supposed to do in the house he didn't do he went to do with this time worse somewhere else by feeding pigs You think Pastor Fino is too hard and his teachings are hard, so I'm running to somewhere where I can be accepted for me to do everything I want to do. Uh, you go and serve pigs. Can I continue? Hello, who have your hands at me here? Procrastination. They say it is the thief of time. I call it the thief of destiny. That man who is all over you and is wasting your time and you are convinced he's not going to marry you, don't let him be around until you are an old woman. He can go for another slim girl to marry, but you, when you are metamorphosed into an old lady, When you get home tonight, hold his clothes and ask him, are you paying my labola or not? <laughs> You're not saying amen. amen. If you don't smile, I'll suspect you tonight. Eh? <laughs> Can I continue? Yes. Procrastination. The fourth thing that made me see that they were foolish was that how could we be sitting in the same classroom, in the same school of the virgins, with the same vision waiting for a bridegroom, and then I come to my own colleague to beg for oil. Anything that will let you beg your peers for life or for sustenance, I pray to revoke that curse from off your life. You didn't say amen at all. Jesus Christ. Good God. Your younger siblings will not build a house for you to go and squat with them. I pray to declare judgment on any case. On your life that is going to cause you to struggle for people to bypass you. And a prophesied overtake us unction upon your life. And declare that this year, anybody who has gone past you, you are receiving an anointing to overtake them. If you believe it, stand up, take three steps. And say, I received overtake us anointing. Come on. Say, I received overtake us anointing. Jesus. Four things that tells us that the other wise virgins were wise. Number one, they had extra oil on them. They carried extra oil. Everybody say extra oil. Yes. Number two, they had a foresight. They saw beyond that night. Vision. Church, the devil is interested in your sight because your sight determines your height. What you see is what you get. Are you here? When the Philistines arrested Samson after shaving the hair, the next thing they did was to remove his eyes from the socket. Why? Because the devil is interested in your sight. When the people of Gabes Gilead wanted to come and fight the people of Israel and the Bible says Saul wanted an agreement with them. The Bible said for them to sign the treaty, they said that if anybody wants us to have peace with you, then let them remove their right eyes. The devil knows if you have an impaired vision, then you can see your enemies and fight them. And what the devil is doing today in this our time is that he's either destroying our visions or giving us impaired visions. But the devil is a liar. The church is regaining his vision back. 
You didn't hear what I said. <laughs> Who told you you cannot become any good person? Any bad vision the devil has given to you about yourself, your pastor, your church, your family, your future. We bring it and declare that you are releasing to your blessing. <laughs> if you believe it, lift your leg and shout yes. God tells Abraham, step out of the camp. What do you see? Abraham said, from the east to the southwest, not I see, I see. God said, as far as your eyes can see, I will give it to you. Makiti palinta in So when I see my Mercedes Benz, I will drive it. When I see this very tall nice girl with me in the altar and i'm saying i do i would do her are you in this house this year how many of you have a vision to build your houses my goodness lift your hands here i receive it Hagar was driven out of the house of Mrs. Abraham Sarah because after sleeping with the old man, she was like, we are all enjoying the same thing. So I won't respect you again. If you see your daughter becoming insubordinate and talking the way she's not supposed to be talking, take a critical analysis of her sexual life because maybe a man older than you is sleeping with her. So Sarah became angry and said, you are leaving this house. Two pilots are never going to pilot this plane. You got to go. And Abraham goes to God in prayer. God tells him, listen to your wife. Husbands, let us sometimes listen to them. It is true sometimes they say some things. It's not necessary. Hello. I thank God she's not here. I can say it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen to them. They drove Hagar away from the house. And Hagar was in this big desert with just a bottle of water. And because of the scorchiness of the sun, the water got finished. She didn't have any water anywhere. So she left the child right within the thicket, expecting that fate would decide what would happen to the child. And she was like, okay, let me just also find my way. While she was going, an angel calls her. Hagar, where are you going? Hagar said, I don't have water to drink and the child must die. The Bible said, and the angel touched her eyes. And the same place where she did not see water, she saw water there. Who told you Cape Town doesn't have money? Who told you you cannot rise up from Google Earth too and become a star in this country? Your eyes must only be touched. Your eyes must only be touched. There are so many opportunities in this country. I'm surprised a lot of you are waiting for a white man to employ you. Hello here. I, I, am I talking to you? I was praying this morning when God told me some of you are going to own companies and employ white people. You don't believe it. Look at you. You don't believe it. That your saloons I saw, many whites will be working for you. Hey! Are you giving the Lord a shout? Put your hands on your eyes. Say, Lord, touch my eyes. 
again say it like you mean it say lord touch my eyes say it yes. your eyes must just be open i've never gone to a city or a country a town where god didn't glorify himself it's not possible because as soon as i enter the place i see what people don't see i see what people don't see may god touch your eyes these five wise virgins saw something their other colleagues didn't see ask somebody by you what do you see about yourself this year come on about three people just ask them what do you see about yourself this year mm. The third thing about these wise virgins that makes me love them so much was these virgins had been with their friends for how many hours? I don't know. Have sat on the same bench for how many hours? I don't know. Virgins as colleagues, the same vision, sat there through the night. They slumbered. They slept. And when their colleagues came to ask them for oil, they looked at their faces and told them no. Every good virgin, every wise virgin at a certain time of her life must learn to say no to certain people. Amen. Oh, Bishop, I don't know. When I say that to them, I feel they will say I'm proud. And so sometimes I just act as if I'm thinking about their proposal, but I wouldn't do it. Hey, everybody will sleep with you. Let me get down and talk to you. Say, is. 